Hello and welcome to lesson 53 of the Learning Guitar series. In this particular lesson we're going to look at chords. And in particular we're going to look at how we can learn chords by studying and applying them also to scales. One of the difficulty of uh, learning chords I think is that most of the time we look at those uh, books, you know, 2000 chords per guitar kind of thing. And we look at the first five and because we cannot find an application for it, we tend to forget them by the day after. So somehow, I think, and probably the best way to kind of learn chords is to put them in contest and actually use them. And I did the same mistake myself many, many years ago. Um, so when I say learning chords using scales, what I mean is um, that we're going to use um, Ionia scale in this case, say like G major scale. We're going to play it on the first string of the guitar, but at the same time we're going to harmonize it using chords. Uh, this is going to become even more clear the moment I show you the PDFs that goes with that. Not only we're going to harmonize that particular scale, uh, we're going to do it having it on the first string and also on the second string. You'll see it in a second. We're actually going to harmonize it using all the chords of the key of G in this case. Uh, again, this is the result of our Harmony Theory lesson 16, I believe. And if you look at the key of G, you quickly find out that once we harmonized that particular mode, we have G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D7, E minor, F sharp, half diminished, or F sharp minus 7 flat 5. So in other words, we're going to be performing this particular scale so G Ionian or G major is at the same time, since we have a sixth, so an E note available to us, and also a major seven, which is F sharp, available to us, we will actually start from the sixth and go all the way to the 14th fret. And we're going to do this in a contest where first we're going to play G chords and harmonize and all that scale, and then A minor chords, B minor chords, C major chords, D7 chords, E minor chords, F, F sharp half diminished chords. And so we're lo basically looking at four family of chords across the neck. So as you can see, this can be a very, very useful exercise. Now let's have a, look, a quick look at the PDF that comes with this lesson. So, as you can see, I literally wrote how the progression will go for G, A minor, B minor, C. And here you can constantly see the melody on the top first string. As you can see, the melody is always the same. Same thing here. The chord is going to change. And then the same thing having, having the melody on the second string. I'm going to look at that in a second. What's important to us is also to know that when we're thinking G, we're thinking Ionian, and the possible extensions from the point of view of the chord is major 7, 9, 11, and 13. When we're thinking Dorian, the possible extensions are flat 7, 9, 11, and 13. When we're thinking Frigian, possible extension flat 7, flat 9, 11, flat 13. Why am I saying this? Well, because there is many different ways to voice a chord. And uh, the example which I, I put in the PDF, which I want you to study, and you know, eventually analyze them to understand what actually is happening in terms of intervals for the chord. But there are just one possibility among many. Let me give you an example. If I want to play G, a G chord, and at the same time I want this note, so the E note, to be my you know melodic note, well, I could just do it this way if I wanted to. And you can hear E in the top, but I could also do it this way. And I get different I get a different sound. I could have you know a double E note by playing this. Since B is the third of G, I could even just do this. Or I could put the sixth, not to repeat the B note here. And so I would have major 7, 9. Mm -hmm. 
so as you can see, these are three, four different ways to just play a, a G major type of sound, having E as a melodic note. <coughs> I'm sorry. Now, what's important here to understand, and that's why I added, you know, next to the chord, you see Ionia possible extensions. Because the possible extension, in this case, major 7, 9, 11, and 13, are notes that I can add. To me, personally, it's just major sounds. I'm not going to go into detail into, okay, that's a major 7 with another 13, blah, blah, blah. To me, it's just a major sound. So these are all G chords. Uh, now, if I was to play a pop song, I will keep it simple. It's just 1, 3, 5. That's pretty much it. And if the melody is an E note, okay. I'm just not going to embellish it, if you see what I mean. But if I'm maybe composing something, you know, I might like this particular sound better. And if I go and analyze it, the notes I'm playing, I'm playing G, then I'm playing F sharp, which is the major seven, then I'm playing A, which is the ninth, then I'm playing like a, a B, the second string, and that's a, a major third, and then I'm playing the E note, which is a six. So this is a chord that contains major 7, 9, 13. Okay, we could write these other G major 7 and then the 13, G major 9, other 13. But to me, it just makes things more confusing. To me, it's just that this is just G. Now, if we look at, let's look at the progression. So you see what I'm saying? In this particular case, so here is the melody. Five, seven, eight. Basically, this is your G Ionian. And at the same time, I have G chords, different types of G chords, harmonizing it as we go up the neck. So what's important here is to understand the principle behind the exercise, I mean, the idea, and why it can be useful so that you can apply it to different type of chords, different type of scales, you know, at the end of the day, different type of melodies. Because this poses the foundation, in a way, this kind of approach poses the foundation uh, for a future in, you know, devising chord melodies. Solo playing, okay? so literally solo guitar playing. Um, the idea is, say, first of all, we're going to do this in G, and then in A minor, then in B minor. But now, everything I'm going to play is basically G. But I'm finding, I'm looking for G chords everywhere following my melody, okay? As I said, to me, I'm not going to bother with, oh, that's a G major 7 or G major 6. With These are G major sounds, okay? As I said, when you look at the PDF, feel free to analyze what kind of exact intervals they are, you know. So, let's say, let's start from E. Then we have F sharp, and I can play this. Then we have G, and I can play this. So I hope you understand that basically all is happening here. Um, just playing G chords and going up the melody and making sure that I find a chord for each piece of melody that I'm playing. In this case, it's just G. Now, let's have a look at the PDF and we see how the same concept, so the same scales, now this time, will apply to A minor, so the second chord, or number two of the key of G. So here is A minor Dorian, possible extension, flat 7, 9, 11, and 13. The melody is still the same, it's still our G major scale. If you want to look at it now exactly as an A, A Dorian scale, the notes are going to be exactly the same. And if we look at it, 
you know, I'm going to play it to you while you look at the PDF. It's going to sound like this. In the, and of course, in the PDF, the progression are written all the way up and backwards. Pay attention because backwards they are not always the same voicings. I might have changed the voicings so that you learn different type of chords and you know, just going up and down. But as I said, the principle is pretty much self explanatory of what you're doing here. Um, let's look at let's have a look, for example, B minor. Now, the only the thing that you have to be careful, for example, let's say we just did A minor, and it was A minor Dorian, because it's called number two, so the extensions I could add are flat 7, 9, 11, 13. When it comes to B minor, uh, I cannot use... There's going to be a lot of shapes which are in common with A minor, okay, for as long as I go all the way to the flat 7, 1, flat 3, 5, flat 7. The, the chord shapes are going to look exactly the same as A minor. I just, you know, I tone up. The moment I start adding the embellishments, for example, Dorian has got a 9, while Frigian will have a flat 9. So that's the kind of things you need to be, to be careful about in constructing this kind of exercise. But as I said, as you analyze what I wrote for you, a lot of, a lot of these things will come out. You probably understand more from studying the PDF that maybe, you know, maybe I'm confusing you. But hopefully this is, in a way, simple enough. That's, to me, that's the entire point in studying chords. It's simple enough that probably because you're applying it to a melody, you will retain some of these shapes and eventually use them when you play music. Because that's the thing with chords, as I mentioned before. Anyway, let's have a look at uh, B minor. <laughs> Now, I'm going to just explain you this particular voicing here, for example. So, when you have a look at this voicing here, so that you understand what I mean by using possible extensions and intervals. Okay, this is from a B perspective. This is a flat 3, so there's a flat 3 in the bass. This is a flat 9, and I can use it because we are in Phrygian mode. This is basically just a fifth of B. This is an F sharp note. This is a B note, so here is your root note. And this is a E note, so here is your 11th. So when it comes to B minor, this would be no. Okay, this is B minor, big shape of E kind of guy. E minor 7. What we did, we have the bass on the third. All I'm trying to say is that these are both B minor. Like, these are not, um, uh, how do you call them? It's escaping me right now. Okay, inversions. These are not inversions. I'm just remixing the intervals that I have access to because of the nature of the chord that I'm playing. You know, that's, that's, that's what I want you to notice. So when you're analyzing those chords that I wrote for you, if you want to literally figure out what is it that it's happening there for that particular voicing, for example. Remember, you're playing B, so give yourself a reference. Okay, here is my B reference. What is this note? This is a flat 3. What is this note? This is a flat 9. What is this note? That's a fifth. What is this note? This is the root note. And here you have my melodic note, which in this case is uh, it's an 11. So 
as I say, it's kind of logical in a way. You just have to get used to it. But in time, you're going to find, look at this is a nice sound. Very much of a Phrygian sound because they're flat nine. And in a way, it can be more interesting than. Right? I hope you understand. And if you don't, just ask questions on the YouTube channel or, you know, if you are one of the patrons, please, you know, feel free to send a message and I'll, 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 I'll be more than happy to help. Let's move on. So let's look at C. And as you can see, again, same concept. The scale is still the same. Still our G Ionian. In this case, Lydian. The extension is possible, 7, 9. Sharp 11. This is something to look forward to. And 13. And if I think of it, say for example, look at this chord here. This chord here, it looks like this is probably the simplest thing in the universe. Here is my melodic note. And if you look at the intervals, okay, that's the root note. This is a 9. This is a G, so just a fifth. Major 7, so it's a B note. Here is our melodic note, which is an E, which is a third. So, this is enough. I could have done, obviously, this. Put it down big chord. I just went for this, just to make my point about, okay, I can add embellishments and sounds. Let's keep going up the, with that progression. As you notice, some of these sounds now they contain sharp 11, so for example, this chord, where here is a sharp 11, so I had something going. Also, this was interesting. So many, so many to choose from. Yeah. That's also like a C chord. As I said, that you want to understand this idea that you can add the intervals to it. And of course, we did uh, some chord studies two lessons ago already. So I decided that we're going to reveal to leave chord studies and double stops. As you notice, we've done third double stops, then some chord studies, six double stops, now we're doing some more chord studies, and we're going to go back and forth. Um, chords are not an easy thing to digest, and that's why I'm looking for ways, uh, basically short of just literally doing chord melodies. And the reason I'm not doing chord melodies, as you know, if I start using uh, known tunes, and uh, YouTube is going to, you know, block the videos or whatever, right? So in this case, I'm just using like a major scale and kind of harmonize it in time and maybe I'll write some little melodies and we'll work on chord melodies on that. But literally, you could take Katy Perry fireworks and take the melody out, put some chords to it, and it will work, I promise you. I cannot do it, otherwise, you know, the algorithm or whatever is going to stop the video for copyright reasons. But as I say, it's a very good skill to have, and it's uh, this idea of 
uh, using chords and apply them straight away in a contest, in a musical contest, you will retain them more easily than if you just study chords for the sake of it. Um, now, let's jump ahead. As you can imagine, the D7 mixolydian, the E minor Aeolian, and the F sharp, F sharp, half diminished octave, the principle is still the same. You'll have like the scale is going up and down at the same time. You're going to be playing D7 many different places, E minor many different places, and of course with the embellishments, and F half diminished many different places. When it comes to the uh, second string version, it's pretty much the same concept. Well, what is it? Starts here. Scale notes on the second string. So again, in this case, most of the chords I wrote here, they were they included five notes. Almost all of them. In this case you have four note chords. I tend to use the bass line other than on the sixth string or the fifth string, and the rest of the notes they become the chord. In terms of scale, again the concept is still the same. So I'm starting from a B note in this case. <laughs> Because it's part of, uh, you know, a G Ionian scale. So you have B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, and you keep going. So let's say if I was to play G, but this has to be my top note, my melodic note, maybe I can do this. Maybe this can be... Was to do the same thing, say A minor. Again, just the notes on the scale are still the same. So, more. Now this is the flat three in the bass. I could have done this. the seven chords deriving from a G, the harmonization of a G scale. Why to do it that way as opposed to just in G or just A minor or like, you know, just a minor chord or that kind of idea. First of all, because you're combining, again, your understanding of the harmonization of a scale. You already have a G higher than scale. Once I harmonize it, I get all those chords. Plus in the process, you're doing major chords, some shapes of it. Minor chords, both Dorian, Phrygian, and Aeolian, which means that the extensions, not to one, flat three, five, flat seven, is common to all three modes, but the extension is going to be different. So you start grasping the difference in between you feeling like playing a minor Phrygian as opposed to a minor Dorian. Of course, you're doing dominant seven chords, although they're not altered, they're just you know, embellished. So it's Mixolydian plus. 9, 11, and 13, and you're doing half diminished chords too. So, you, you know, we're covering four families of chords just by doing this kind of exercise because we're harmonizing the scale. I hope it's all clear. I'm trying not to keep this video too long because at the end of the day, like, if you understand the logic of what we're doing here, have a look at the exercise, study them, and eventually, like, start doing your own thing. I mean, it's like I can take a C major scale and do the same. So, like, I don't know, C major scale will be E, F, G, A, B, C, E, E, F. I keep going, so maybe like, I don't know, this is C, and, and it's Ionian in this case, I can think it's Ionian or Lydian. It's, it's Ionian because I have F in the melody. So that's... Here is my F in the melody. Um, C with G in the melody. C with A in the melody. Uh, let's put B in the melody. C in the melody. Um, D in the melody. That 
that self. I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna do it this way. No, maybe not. Easier for me this. But you see, like, take your time. You don't have to do this to a metronome. Think about it. The, the, the fact that, you know, you look for things it is going to help you interiorize them. Use the PDF I created as a starting point, as I said, just to understand the logic of it. Okay, before we go, I would like to thank... I should have done this at the beginning, but as you know, no marketing person here. Um, the people who are supporting this project on Patreon, I cannot thank you enough. Um... I hope your studies are going well, and as I said, if you have any question about anything, just let me know. I would also like to thank the people who are supporting the YouTube channel by subscribing to it. It's always nice uh, to, to get you know positive feedback to things. And, uh, well, until next time, uh, it's been a pleasure.